thank you so much. I'm going to come to Sean. So, but next I want to think, but also before before we hand over, I just really want to thank uh, thank Louise and Ian and everybody that well, have participated today. In many, many, many ways, it is extremely amazing what you're doing and also extremely important. And I just wanted to share my deep and sincere thanks for everybody, what everybody has done today. And I'm looking at Imu uh, in the back there, and I'm looking at all the people that we can't see right now. Uh, very, very grateful and very, very impressed with everybody's contributions. And let's keep this going. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you, Peter, for your excellent one-liner. Um, Sean. Hey. Over you. I'll try to keep my one my one line a little shorter. Uh, and <laughs> um, I think that that the event has just been incredible. I mean, you know, we we have these ideas and we sort of throw them out in the world, but we don't always see what happens with them, you know. And and we often have our blinders on, and you know, we're focused on the thing that's right in front of us. And an event like this that brings all of those pieces back together and sort of lays out the, the overall scope of everything is just it's just incredible to behold and um and i'm honored to have been a part of it thank you ever so much um coming over to the three amigos in fukushima we'll go uh, if i can tackle asby first please yeah. um i got the sense that you know we reached out to people and everybody showed up it was like um, a sense of elevation and the foundations of SafeCast were somehow stronger and taller than they were before. It's just a beautiful sense I had, even as I was slogging through the rain and the mud in, you know, coastal Fukushima. It was just a beautiful experience uh, to reach out and, and have so much great response. Lovely. Thank you so much. And Emu, at the back there, what was it like for you? everybody's commitment and I'm really, really you're a bit quiet Emma can you come closer to the microphone uh, it was amazing to see everybody's commitment and uh, I want to thank everybody who has participated and watched the stream Thank you so much. Uh, and Emma gets a massive shout out for uh, for her translation efforts. I think there was a, an awful lot of translation and uh, thing going on. So thank you. And not last but Let's not, not forget that Eva was in the car with Joe and Aspi the whole day. Yeah. <laughs> our car positions, yeah. in case you didn't notice. He's driving, I'm here. Too. Seriously. <laughs> Chief driver, you managed to get um, those guys uh, through the streets of Fukushima without driving into a ditch through the rain. You um, didn't see the not losing a muffler. Yeah. You didn't see the ditch. <laughs> We actually did do some sliding and, and ditch navigating and, and uh, near the marine house and it just it just became impassable and we had to we had to abort and go back. Which is what brings me to my line and my line is going to be about wet memory wet because the rain today, but really about the memories that we keep in our wet you know uh, processor and that this is really reminded. You know, all of the things that have gone on in the last 10 years, and for me, especially the drive today was so much reminiscence, you know, going to Jay Village where Peter and I went and saw the, the thing very early on in the project and revisiting the same places and seeing those changes has been, it's still going on. We're going to, I'm sure we're going to come back next week and there'll be roads that we could get down this week that we won't be able to and vice versa. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, before we go on to the video, as, as my co-host, for certainly for the round table, Ian, have you got, you're allowed a one-liner too, and then you can hear us for the next video if that's right, and you're on mute. My one-liner is I was uh, stunned by the number of people that SafeCast has touched in 10 years and their willingness to come out and spent Saturday uh, during COVID and all the strangeness and that they still want to uh, be involved. And uh, that just shows me the power of the original idea. Fantastic. And what a lovely uh, message to move us on to our last video. And then when we come back, uh, uh, penultimate, penultimate. Penultimate comment. Sorry, I'm going to um, share. Share now.
Global. I am Dilum Pereira from Sri Lanka, a lecturer in the Department of Web Design, University of Sri Jayawardenepur. I am engaged in the research in field of electronics and computer science. The most of the, my research are aligned with embedded systems, design of scientific instrumentation. In 2017, I got an opportunity to participate in the Citizen Science Workshop, which was jointly organized by the IAEA, ICTP, and SAFCA at Trieste, Italy. That was a wonderful experience for me. I was able to share my experience and knowledge among the scientists around the world. Through the workshop, I got an handsome experience to build the Cross Nano Kit and analyze the data collected through it. I shared my gathered knowledge among the university students and it was very interesting event for me. In one of the workshops, there was a participant raised a question regarding the legal support for citizen science projects. That question made me think deeper. I also think that with the proper legal support, it is very easy to go ahead. Furthermore, we can improve the awareness of the citizen science and ongoing projects such as safeguards could be more informative to the society. Finally, my heart felt great into the 10th anniversary of the safeguards and my wishes for success of the safeguards. Thank you. So arms on Christ, I'm sorry, yeah, just it's it's, it's, a, it's my instinct <laughs> and it's cold in here. Sorry, Ian sitting in the world's coldest uh, porter cabin in a gar in a garden at the moment, so uh, hence the big jumper. Okay, uh, so welcome back. This is our last sort of uh, get together and wrap up for the session. So as I promised you, my second question to you is, um, what do you think the next ten years is going to look like for Safecast? What's what's kind of coming up? So if we're going to hold this event in ten years' time, what do you think we'll be talking about and celebrating? Uh, and I'll do it in the same order, but I will be very harsh with the uh, people who extend over their time. Peter. I don't want to be the first. How's we? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Oh, I'm, well, Sean, you look ready. Sean looks ready. I'm ready. Sure. Sean is waking, you know, I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> I love like what Ralph said today about things becoming uh, part of the furniture. And um, I, like, it's like Safecast, I, I hope and I wish and I, that we can become like an embedded social system, a ubiquitously embedded social system. It's just such a fundamental part of the way people think and behave and, and, and plan and relate to each other that uh, we don't even have to think about it anymore. Uh, that's a bit abstract, but I really like the idea that it just pervades and, and becomes uh, pretty much ubiquitous, not necessarily us and our devices, but the thinking that we are uh, championing. Great, thank you very much. Um, Sean, can I come to you next? Please? Yeah, I, I, I would like to see more of the sort of viral spread of, of all of this, right? I think over the next 10 years, I think we've, we've laid a, an amazing groundwork. We've planted some incredible seeds and my hope would be that those take on lives of their own and, and just continue to grow. And that in 10 years, we're, we're sitting around again with our minds blown of, of how far this has continued to grow and what new things that we couldn't have possibly imagined have sprouted from those, those initial ideas. And um, I would just like to see that spread continue in ways that we couldn't even imagine right now. Great, thank you. Um, Emu, I'm going to make sure you come right to the front because you're okay. you're equal part of the, the three of you there. So um, come to the front. What do you think we'll be talking about um, in ten years' time if we were to do this again? Um, I'm also excited how um, it would um, extend also to the next generation, as we are also doing a lot of involvement. Um, young kids so that's the thing i'm looking forward to that we have newcomers in our rounds who will join our discussions and so much 
Um, and Joe, any thoughts about where we're going to be in 10 years' time? Well, one of the things that's a little bit cynical is I think we're going to be doing the same thing. Maybe there'll be more of us. But if anything, the COVID crisis and even the earthquake in February has shown us that institutions and industry, maybe it won't be the nuclear industry next time, but it's not something that somebody planned. It's just the natural human nature of those kinds of organizations to have the missteps in communication and, and things that things are going to happen that are going to need our response or the responses from groups like us 10 years from now, 20, even 30 years from now, we're still going to be dealing with that part of human nature. Thank you so much. Peter, have you had a, a micro nap enough to, to, to think about the question? No, it, it's not about thinking about it. It's just being <laughs> still able, able to think after this. No, I, I think what, what, what Sean and and Emo and, and Osby and Joe were saying, and all the people were saying, I, I think, how can we create this into a movement, but also into something that becomes not a status quo, not part of the furniture, but basically common, you know, a human right. And we, when we said, you know, we when we started Safe Cause, you know, the right to know was one of the things we talked about. And I, I think we actually are, and I agree a little bit with Joe, my fear is, is that 10 years from now, we will not be not not made a lot of progress because we lost a lot of ground over the last last couple of years in in many ways where data has become the afterthought opinion is the first thought and i think we really i really hope that we can drive more of these conversations we had today in in a bigger context but also set set themes that you know you know data has become politicized data has become uh, a thing that can be traded, data has become whatever. But I think in my mind, data is a human right. And if we can focus on that thought, I think 10 years from now, if we have more dialogues around it and hopefully build some new kind of foundations around what we started with that can inspire people to say that, yes, why, can, why can't data be data? I think that would be fantastic. Now, if we will reach that in 10 years from now, you know, I'm an optimist. Uh, uh, but I'm not uh, a fantast, so we have to understand that it is a struggle and there's a lot of way to go, but there's also a lot of opportunities for, for us to do this. And I think in the early discussion, and sorry, this is not a one-liner, uh, in the early discussion, you know, we, we talked to, there was, I think there was, there was a part of discussion where we talked about citizen science, you know, and, and is it, is, you know, it, it, is it going to have enough impact? And it has, and, and I think, yes, it will have impact if we have enough buildup and, and, and capacity. And it always starts with one single seed, one single step. Everything you will see in life started with one single element and that grew. And I, and I think when we, we talk about these themes, uh, you know, we're, we're just starting and, and it is fragile and we need to create it and we need to love it. But we need to figure out ways to make it more institutionalized. And I think we made a tremendous amount of headway. I was very impressed with all the discussions we had and all the, you know, all the people that came and everything. Ten years from now, if we can achieve a point where, you know, the right to open information around our environment is a human right, I think we would have made a huge, amazing impact, and that would be my dream. Can I, can I add one more, one more tiny footnote onto this whole thing. Uh, yeah. You know, in, in this sort of like looking at the last 10 years, I, I think one unfortunate thing that we've seen is the continued push towards polarization, right, in, in all of this. I think that this event shows the value of bringing in different people from different viewpoints and trying to work together towards some sort of common goal that's, that's better, you know, for everyone in a lot of ways. And I think that the trend that we've been seeing so much over the last few years is sort of the, the absolute demonization of anybody who isn't 100% on your side. And I wonder if we would have been able to do some of what we did, if we would have been able to have some of the conversations that we had if we were starting this today because of some of those walls that have built, been built in a lot of ways. And I think it's really an important, uh, an important piece of what we've done and what we've tried to do is that you know, there are some, there are some universal truths in this data and, and in these approaches that regardless of, you know, politics or, or, you know, position or anything, you can sort of find these common things to talk about to try to take steps forward. And, and I think that that's something that uh, I hope we don't lose in the next 10 years. Thank you. That was a really helpful addition. 
Um, before we go on to our proper thank yous and things, um, I probably have one thing that I'd like to say, but before I do that, um, Ian, do you have any, what might be look like 10 years from now, if we were asked to host a second round table? It's going to seem odd, but I'm far more optimistic, perhaps because I'm not quite as tired as, as the others. Um, uh, I have relatively small children uh, and they watch, uh, we, we like watching BBC. So you get the planet Earth sees climate change is coming and things that are coming that are not going to get hidden. There's going to be uh, a sequence. Uh, every event that doesn't get addressed is going to put pressure on the fact that more of these events need seen. And uh, you've got the loss of habitats, the extinctions. There's, there's, you know, it's not to be depressive, but there's many more things going on. And all of it is in more daylight than it has ever been because everyone can share data and devices. I, I, I avoid some politics, but uh, there is no way that Black Lives Matter movement would have happened without uh, smartphones uh, uh, having cameras on them. And I, I cannot predict um, the change in society. I think to the comment that Ralph made that uh, for his students, uh, it's like, well, duh, of course, safe class exists. I mean, why wouldn't it? Um, I don't think you put that genie back in the box. Uh, so I think this is a one way street and there'll be more and more data. And I suspect that with more and more issues, uh, this will become the norm and um, that's almost one line. So I'll, I'll give it to you. I think my, my sort of one comment is probably encapsulates both um, my feelings from today and also um, where I think I'd like to see things being in 10 years. It's probably um, uh, there's an awful lot of chat that you didn't see if you were watching this on Zoom or on the um, on the YouTube channel going on between the panelists and the people who are on the Zoom call. And um, uh, that highlighted the tremendous sort of amount of challenges and differences of opinion that we have. And I think it's great that that was able to, to take place sometimes on screen as it were, and sometimes just in the conversations off screen. And I hope that where those differences of opinions exist, it's great that there's a format to do it. And, and that's where you learn to sort of come to compromise is through being able to have good conversations and, and providing a platform. And hopefully in, in 10 years time, I'd like to think that some of the things which we don't think are currently possible, we can start to, to work a way towards them becoming possible rather than um, seeing this, them as sort of um, intractable problems that we can never overcome. Um, some of the issues around uh, lay, lay and expert science and citizen science versus um, officialdom and exactly where the, the boundaries are between those two. And if, are you a scientist or are you not a scientist? And actually there's been a lot of discussions about people wearing multiple hats and being all of these things at one time or um, perhaps none of them. Um, so I would really like if, when we come back, when we come back in 10 years time, that um, we continue to have some really positive stories about um, how things have moved forward and hopefully we haven't gone back um, and we continue to sort of push the boundaries of, of what we can do. So with that, I'd like to say a massive thank you to everybody who's on um, and also I'm going to read you, hopefully read the names out. Um, I haven't got the names, apologies for all of our uh, the ride speakers, for which there were many, many, many people that um, uh, Asby, Emu and uh, Joe visited, but our um, the roundtable speakers, Daniel Blumenthal, Peter Bosso, Peter Kutcher, Genevieve Beaumont, Michiel van Oetshausen, Ben Epstein, Sophie Knight, Tanya Perko, Jan Hellebrandt, Astrid Leyland, Ralph Kaiser, Hinal Turkanu, Marco Zanaro, Joka Kennan, Akiba um, Akiva, <laughs> Nadia Zelen uh, Zeleznik, Gaston Muskens, Claire Mace, Sanja Mukopoche, apologies, I do apologise if I pronounced that incorrectly, I almost certainly did, and finally, um, Sean, you kind of get lobbed on the end there as well because you've joined us here, and also thank you so much to everybody, certainly for the round table who was um, behind the scenes, so um, Catronel, um, Ian, Mary, Nasby, 
Um, you did a, an amazing job in kind of corralling all of our various speakers together and making suggestions to for who we could contact in the first place. So really appreciate that. And I know loads and loads of people were behind the camera um, for Japan. So um, not least Kenny and Kelsey, um, uh, I know you guys have basically been up for pretty much 24 hours straight. So um, uh, thank you so much for not being asleep currently. Any any other thank yous to say? Again, I well, thank you, Louise, and thank you, Ian. Ian, uh, and again, you know, we started talking about this. I think part of, I mean, just the way the discussion emerged, and it was just a few weeks ago, right? And and we yeah. pulled all this together, and you guys did heavy lifting. You organized this beautiful session uh, in, in a way that I don't think any of us uh, could have. And uh, it's just great that we can, um, you know, these things can happen so independently or interdependently like that. And that's another vision I have for the future. So. Uh, thank you so much. Big hugs to both of you. Yeah, I, just wanna, I, would, I would like to you shout know. out to all the musicians that enlightened yes. our day today. And uh, and, and I, I truly believe that that you know we all have our passions, but in in you know in a way, you know, all of it comes together. And I really want to thank all the musicians we had today. We had this wonderful uh, you know, just moments ago, uh, uh, Katrina and, and compositions. Uh, I can tell you that the music that we had from Tokyo, uh, the people that came to play today because of COVID and everything, it meant many, many more things to to everybody playing today than you can imagine. And, um, uh, you know, we had a wonderful moment when Ashton uh, sung Mercy Mercy by Marvin Gaye and he improvised words around radiation in that. If you watch carefully, there were a lot of, you know, there were a lot of uh, kudos and 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 it really made me you know extremely inspired and i think there were also moments today when we were looking back where you know you you climb a mountain you you always look for the peak but when you look down to the valley you only realize how much you have climbed and we as humans tend to only look at the peak and we don't realize where we are and i think that is kind of the the thought we had but i think the musical elements today the arts the the inspirational parts of what we do are as important as the physical things we do and I just wanted to say thank you for all the people that came today uh, and all the people that, you know, that have supported us over the last 10 thousands of people have participated in project. And I just want to say thank you so much for for doing that. But believe in what 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 we stand for, continuing, continue doing it. If it is safe cost or not, we uh, we as citizens can do a whole lot more than you can imagine. And thanks to Catronelle as well for being the key. Yes. To help um, persuade and organize uh, so many speakers today and, uh, and for, for doing such My a pleasure. Job. And I was really honored to be part of this. And okay. I know we had some problems with make a smile, but <laughs> if you want to, I can we, play it again. I, I got, I got, I've, got the, I've, got Roger, I've got the last video from Argentina. Okay. Ready? Roll yes. It. Roll it. Yep. So Rodri first. So Rodri, if you're watching, it's your turn in the limelight, and I know you'll love it. Here we go. Roll it. Hello, everybody. Uh, happy anniversary to Sidecast, this great project that started 10 years ago. I'm Rodri from Argentina. Uh, I'm a researcher. I work uh, on environmental awareness systems. I work with uh, air quality, water quality sensors, radiation sensors, uh, weather stations. I started my research uh, back in Argentina on the awesome. National Atomic Energy Commission. Then I moved to Italy and I work for the Wireless Lab Laboratory at the ICTP, International Theoretical Center. Now, now I'm working on uh, the, the National Oceanographic and Seismological Institute here in Trieste, Italy. Uh, long time ago, like five years ago, we had an excellent workshop in, at the ICTP. Uh, organized by by the ICTP and the uh, um, uh, Atomic Energy Agency, International Atomic a Agency, uh, here in Italy, where we met the CERCAST group. 
the team, uh, Joe, Asby, where we built our Gegi, um, and we knew about this amazing project, this crowdsourcing project, which is really amazing. And after this first experience in Italy, where I met a lot of people from different countries, uh, from Latin America, Africa, uh, Asia. It was a, a, a really, really um, amazing uh, workshop. Then we had another another workshop in, in Bariloche, in Argentina, where we put one gigi on, on a drone and we flew around the national, the, the atomic center in Bariloche. Another, another great experience. And after that, uh, I started to, to take my Gegi uh, with me when I travel. I, be, I, I took it to different places, but uh, for example, uh, on, on a volcano in Guatemala. But my favorite place uh, is in Argentina. Uh, actually, it's in the border between Argentina and Chile in the north part, where the border is 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 defined by the the, the mountains uh, and you reach five five thousand uh, meters high and I took my gegi and there uh, the the radiation was quite high so I, I I strongly suggest you to go to the safecast map and search this place because it's quite 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 amazing. Uh, finally, well, I want to, to thank uh, Joe, Asby, uh, Ian, Marco Senaro, uh, Hermano from the STP for also also Akiva, I don't want to forget Akiva, my friend. Uh, and I, I really want to thank you for all the experiences and I, uh, I wish you all the best for this anniversary and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye. So pizza, I really have to say the, those videos have made me smile. Can I thank everyone, all, all the students who did that? They're, they're, they're just great. So it's nice, to, to, it's I'll, nice, I'll, so nice to see them. Yeah, let, let's let's see if it works this time because at that time we were dealing with significant complex technical circumstances. It's basically a good excuse for saying we didn't have bandwidth. Uh, let me see if I can pull it out again. And uh, uh, the people you saw play this afternoon or or whatever you were were very much featured in that video. It was kind of a teaser. And uh, let me see how did it work again? You share a video. You had to click on these buttons here. This button here. And you had to uh, sign a deed. What? And then click on a button here. And then well, this button here. And then ah, oh, here it is. Okay. Are we ready? Make a smile. Okay, didn't work. Sorry. Um, All right. We're on standby. Didn't work again. Oh, no, didn't work again. Hang it. Hang it. Hang it. Um, Donk. Just so infectious. I said no one can be. 
I've, I've become yeah. the host again, which means I think that Peter has kicked himself out, which I think he probably just needs to reboot himself entirely with a good night's sleep. So on that note, I'm going to ask Sean to say one final word and then we are going to close it, uh, close the event and say thank you so much to everybody who's watching. So Sean, before we say goodbye, hit us yes, with the, it. The one, the one final wrap up is, you know, uh, one thing that we're not very good at <laughs> as we've shown over the last 10 years is, is asking for, for support or money or anything. And, you know, we try to do as much as we possibly can and put out into the world for free, but there's actually a real cost for us on this end to, to produce it all and to keep it going. Um, and so if anybody, you know, finds value in what we're doing or, or thinks it's useful or wants to support it, uh, safecast.org slash donate. Um, every little little bit that comes in helps pay for servers and gas for the car and and you know videos or anything that we're doing this equipment all of this stuff uh, little bits help a lot so uh, just just throwing that out there as well thank you so much in which case everybody if you can make it smile have a wave and i'm going to end the session bye bye bye, -bye.